Hey guys, Danny Johnson here. Today I wanted to talk about ignition timing, so I kind of came up with a non-traditional way of doing that. Uh, this is just something I thought up, and so let me know in the comments what you think about this, if this was helpful or not. Uh, to me it made sense. Uh, basically what we have here is a crankshaft, then we have our connecting rod and our piston. So hopefully you know what the basic, you know, the form of an engine is. Um, but basically you have eight pistons in this case riding up and down on the crankshaft. So um, there are four different strokes to an internal combustion engine. As the piston goes down for the first time, that's the intake stroke. So you have the intake valves are open and it's allowing air to draw into the cylinder. Okay, then the intake valves close and you have the compression stroke. And that's where the, uh, the fuel that's been injected, as well as uh, the air that's in that cylinder, are now being compressed together on the, uh, on the compression stroke, is what it's called. Then you have the power stroke, where the spark plug fires and it creates a, a nice explosion. And that pushes the piston back down, and that's what's actually generating the power on that power stroke. Um, at that time, both the valves, all valves are closed. Uh, then you have the exhaust uh, stroke where the exhaust valves are the only ones open and this piston is now along for the ride on the crankshaft and being you know, moved around by the other pistons that are on their power stroke and that uh, is forcing this piston up and pushing all of the exhaust out of the engine. Now as far as these pistons go you have what's called top dead center and that's when the piston reaches the very top um, as far up as it's going to go before it starts coming back down. So as far as ignition timing is concerned, you have uh, what's called uh, BTDC, which is before top dead center, so as the piston's on its way up, and then you have ATDC, which is after top dead center, as the piston's going down. Okay, so now let's talk about the crankshaft, because you may have heard that uh, timing ignition is measured in degrees and so this is what that means. Uh, the crankshaft spins a full 360 degrees, kind of like a compass. And so what you're doing with ignition timing is telling uh, the spark plug when to fire according to what degree of rotation the crankshaft is found. So um, for example, as you can see here, you have 360 degrees. Let's th think about as the piston's on its compression stroke, on its way up, think about it as a countdown coming closer and closer. So here's 20 degrees, 19, 18, 17. Okay, you're counting down, and right when you get to zero, that would be top dead center. Okay. And then after that, the piston's on its way down. Okay. So, uh, for example, if this piston's on its way up, you would have a countdown going from 50, 40, 30, 20, 10 degrees, and then right at top dead center, you'd be at zero degrees, and then on its way back down, it would be measuring that, uh, that angle again coming down. So you have either advancing your timing or you have retarding your timing. Okay, those are the two options. Think about it as a countdown to zero, Think about zero being payday, like for your job. So if you wanted a cash advancement, you went into your boss and said, I need a cash advancement. You'd be saying, I want to be paid sooner than my paycheck day, which would be on zero. Okay, so you'd be saying, pay me earlier. So if you look at that as far as degrees go, that would be a bigger number. If you said, I want to retard my paycheck. If you wanted your your uh, paycheck afterwards, you'd be the other way. So when you when you advance timing, you're telling the spark plug to to fire farther away from top dead center. When you uh retard your timing, you're telling it to fire basically closer to top dead center. Okay? And there's a reason for that. If your uh spark plug fired too advanced, okay, too premature. Let's say you had it fire way up here, you know, 39 degrees before top dead center. 
what would happen is the piston would be on its way up and you would tell it to fire there way prematurely and so before the piston even gets to the top dead center you would have that full blast fully burned and starting to push down against the piston and if it's if the piston's not even halfway up by then then you can you can uh, really cause some damage because you have all that force of downward explosion while the piston's being pushed up by the other cylinders and the, the other pistons okay so that explosion can actually take chunks off of the piston and it can cause all kinds of damage bend connecting rods you don't want that to happen okay now let's say on the opposite let's say that you had your ignition timing too far retarded where you're saying let's have it explode basically right at top dead center at zero if that were to happen then the piston would be all the way compressed to the top and by the time the explosion took place at top dead center the piston would be on its way down and that flame or that explosion would be chasing the piston rather than pushing it down so you wouldn't uh, you would lose all that power because it's not pushing the piston down the pistons riding back down from the other you know pistons helping turn the crankshaft so you, you do not want your timing too far advanced or too far retarded so there's several factors um, that basically determine when you want the ignition to happen you know um, before top dead center but when it's all said and done it's normal for um, the explosion to have its full effect at about 20 degrees um, after top dead center so as the pistons on its way back down okay so you're basically timing this just right to have the explosion happen before top dead center okay, as the pistons on its way up but you want the full explosion and the full power of it to happen about 20 degrees as the pistons on its way down and then that will push that piston down so let's talk about some of the things that will determine ignition timing okay so uh, one of those things is the pressure in the cylinders so if the car has a high compression ratio or if you have a supercharger which is you know putting a lot more air into the cylinders you're going to have a more powerful explosion okay so where a normal car could be firing off at you know let's just say in the 20 degree range um, if you had a supercharged car or a high compression car um, then that explosion is going to happen faster so you have to retard your timing closer to probably around 17 is kind of normal okay so you have to retard it and make that explosion happen later if that explosion happens too soon as we talked about that full blast is going to happen before you reach top dead center okay so a supercharged engine a higher compression engine its timing is going to be retarded it's going to be closer to top dead center and normally when you first start at idle your car is running about 10 degrees timing you're just sitting there idling the car the engine's not running very fast so it has enough time at only 10 degrees before top dead center to to create the explosions and have them do their job as you go wide open throttle as the engine spins faster and faster and faster the timing actually has to be advanced you know and on norm naturally aspirated cars you're talking into the, the 30s 25 to 30 range it's kind of normal because you have to ignite that blast prematurely so that by the time it reaches 20 degrees after top dead center it's at its full blast so uh, just remember that um, the faster the engine's spinning you have to basically create that spark sooner so it has time for that uh, explosion to fully burn before it gets to top dead center and on its way down about 20 degrees after so let's talk about uh, another thing octane a higher octane is going to burn slower okay so that's the reason why supercharged cars and all that one of the reasons that they have a higher octane that you're running is for safety because a higher octane 
will not explode as easily so you can push that fuel harder and with more pressure before you decide to ignite it but another reason is because it burns slower so you want to uh, if <laughs> let's just say you have a regular car and you have uh, you know maybe 20 degrees of timing in your tune so let's say you had about 20 degrees in your tune and then you go and say I'm gonna throw a whole bunch of 100 octane in my car. Well, that's going to be a problem because you're gonna actually lose power because that piston's on its way up. And if you have a 100 octane in it and you have it fire at 20 degrees timing, it's gonna burn so slow that by the time the piston's on its way down, that's when you're gonna have that fullness of the explosion taking place. And so you're, you're gonna have that flame chasing the piston again. Okay, so um, my Cobra over here, for example, um, it's running about seven, it should be running 17 degrees of timing. Um, I'm actually not happy with the, how the timing set up. It was um, dynoed by a guy down in Vegas who used to work at Shelby. And when, in fact, I'll, I'll use my Cobra as an example for this for that reason. Um, and when it was at Shelby, Shelby American at the time, the person who was doing the, the tune was one of their top dyno guys, but he loved ignition timing. Because you can make, you, to some extent, you can make more power if you have um, more of a uh, advanced timing, right? He, at the time, had a pretty good reputation of getting a lot of horsepower out of cars. But it was later found out that he was using far too much ignition timing and then he was combating that by uh, adding more and more fuel to keep the cylinder cool and to keep the cylinder from pre-igniting and so where my car should normally uh, you're running about 17 degrees of timing with these supercharged cobras at my power level 17 pounds of boost 17 degrees of timing that's kind of normal okay so what he had done though is he had advance the timing to be about 22. Okay, so he's telling the spark plug to have to fire a lot earlier than it should. Then he basically said, well, since it has so much timing in the tune, use a higher octane so that it, it will burn slower. So this was his strategy. You know, advance ignition timing, run a higher octane, and but and basically that's going to create the best blast and right when you're 20 degrees after top dead center that's when you're going to have that full power going. Well that's great but what happens when you don't have a high octane, 100 octane or some other things like that, that's, uh, that's pretty dangerous. So a safe tune is going to be retarded closer and closer to zero. Okay, in fact when you put your car on the dyno they'll probably first start it out with you know a really low degree of, uh, of tuning like that that's close to top dead center and then they'll start advancing it and advancing it and advancing it and once they start uh, seeing that there's some knock taking place or where the fuel's igniting uh, prematurely and all that then they'll back it off about two degrees but uh, anyway when I got to the Cobra on the road I put on my Aero Force Interceptor and I was looking at the the time in advance and saw that it was going all the way up to 20 about 22 degrees of ignition timing okay so on normal octane that's actually pretty dangerous so I've been throwing uh, that Torco accelerator you know I've been using some of that in the tune and uh, basically running that if I was ever going full throttle or not even going full throttle and full boost. So um, anyway, um, that's how ignition timing works. You basically are deciding on the pistons in a compression stroke, you're deciding when you want it to fire and um, you want it to fire basically before it gets to top dead center so that the fullness of the blast is happening about 20 degrees after and pushing the piston down. But if you have it fire too soon, that whole flame, you know, that whole explosion is gonna be fighting the piston and taking chunks out of the piston, bending connecting rods, all kinds of stuff. So you don't want it to happen too soon 
and you don't want to have it happen too late or you miss the party and you don't even get any power out of that explosion. So uh, remember as well to uh, advance your timing is going to be a bigger degree number and then uh, as you get closer and closer to zero that's going to be retarding your timing. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. appreciate uh, you watching the videos. Hope this was a helpful video to explain ignition timing and a few things about it. And uh, if there's something that I forgot to mention or something that you have a question on, go ahead and put it in the comments and we'll see if we can get any questions answered. Thanks for watching guys.